the way Senator Irungu Kangata has burst into the limelight. Ay, 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 ay. Kenyans are talking about nothing else when it comes to politics in the country. It is all about the letter that went viral. Yani, a confidential letter to the head of state went viral. <laughs> How does that happen? And the long and short of this controversial letter was that within the Mount Kenya region, only two out of every ten Kenyans support the BBI. And naturally, one has to assume that this was a scientific poll with a satisfactory sample size. <laughs> Let's not even discuss the history and performance and record of scientific polls, political ones, in Kenya. Let's not even go there. Oops, I think in my excitement I'm going too fast. Let's slow down a little. I think it is a good idea to get to know Irungu Kangata better. Before we proceed, yeah, because it is all about the character of a person. The character, your character is everything, not how much money you have. And we already know the character of all our politicians. But let's be fair to Senator Kangata. Yeah, let's dig into his past. And I'm sure we'll get clues that will help us figure out this man. And then maybe we can start to solve this mystery. Because indeed, it is a mystery. It is a mystery because the leaking of the letter and the aftermath clearly, yeah, very clearly, at least to me, suggest that this was a choreographed political move aimed at achieving certain political objectives. But before we dive into that very fascinating exercise, allow me to remind you that my weekly intelligence briefings number 43 is out and it is based on the super sensitive topic yeah, of the claim that there are people out to stop the deputy president at all costs I think you get what I mean if you're a club 1999 subscriber or a subscriber to the weekly intelligence briefings, check your inbox, yeah, and then you'll be able to receive this Moto Kamapasi weekly intelligence brief. And if you're not yet a subscriber, don't worry. Use the email address you see on your screens right now and send a blank email to that email address. And you'll receive an automated response in seconds, giving you details on how you can be a member. Payment details. Right. Senator Kangata has a long history of rebelling against authority. In high school, he was expelled yeah, for writing protest notes against what he saw as injustices in high school. At the University of Nairobi, where he was a student leader, actually vice chair of SONU, he protested bitterly against the introduction of the parallel program. His argument was that it would lower the quality of education and he ended up being kicked out of the university yeah, before finishing his law degree. And he ended up DJing 
at nightclubs in Muranga. And he was also a matatu tout. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, Senator Kangata's favorite music is Bob Marley and Peter Tosh. Reggae. When President Mwai Kibaki was elected into office in late 2002, one of the first things he did in early 2003 was to pardon all suspended university students. And Kangata took advantage of this and went back to the university to finish his law degree. He ended up qualifying as a lawyer. And after a brief stint working for others, he established his own law firm, Irungu Kangata and Company Advocates, which he still runs to this day. Now, my verdict is that Bwana Kangata is a classic case of a person who has problems obeying authority. He has problems being under authority. That is very clearly his profile. And it is a spiritual truism that a person who cannot be under authority cannot handle authority as a leader. That is a spiritual law, not my opinion. You know a rebel will always find a cause, yeah, a cause he can run with in his or her rebellion. And so it is never about the cause. It is about rebelling against any kind of authority. This is human nature. People with such characters, even when appointed to positions of authority, will always find themselves attracted yeah, to the group, even if this group is under them, yeah, that are fighting for a certain cause. They can't help it. It's just them. And this is very important information for a boss who may want to take such a person under their wing, away from another boss that this person is rebelling against. Yeah, they must know that the character will rebel also against them at a certain time in the future. It is simply their nature. We had a great Kenyan politician who had this kind of character. Yeah. A man called Martin Shikuku, who was legislator for Butere for decades. Moi appointed Shikuku assistant minister, but it didn't last. He must have felt like a fish out of water, yeah? not rebelling against something or somebody. Now that we have this information, let's move to this latest controversy involving Senator Irungu Kagata. The first thing we must take careful note of is that a chief whip has direct access to the president. They don't need to write a letter. Now, just a minute. I know that there are a lot of us who are very emotional against the BBI. And I know there are also those of us who are very emotional for the BBI. But let us forget which side of the divide we stand and analyze this coldly. Yeah, let's analyze the politics involved here. And I suspect that the BBI may be very unpopular on the ground in the Mount Kenya region. But that's not what we're discussing today. We're discussing the politics around this controversial letter. 
The second very important point to note is that even if Senator Kangata decided to drop the president a note, he had to emphasize something, put something in writing, which is normal. There was no reason, there would never be a reason in a hundred years to copy such a document to another person, to a third party. Think about it. Why would you do that? Because the senators told us that he was not responsible for leaking the document to the press. And he has told us that the document leaked because he copied it to somebody. Here yeah, whom he has not told us who it is he copied the document to. Kwanza, anything you communicate to the president, even if it is not sensitive, should never be copied. Copying it to somebody else, hiyo ni madarao. Pure and simple. And this has absolutely nothing to do with whether the BBI is popular or not. Yeah, I need to remind you that. We're not discussing that. Let's not get emotional. We're just discussing the truth. Now, just imagine for a minute, you are the president of Kenya, and somebody is communicating with you, and they're copying this communication with you to somebody else. Personally, if I was a president, I would not even read the document. It would end up in the dustbin immediately. <laughs> and it has nothing to do with pride. Yeah, things are just not done like that. How? And to make matters worse, this is a highly educated individual, a learned friend, a lawyer. The way these things are done is that if you want to write to the president and to everybody, yeah, and any Kenyan can do that, then you write what is called an open letter to the president, which can be published in local newspapers as an opinion piece. Yeah, that's how you do it. That is the only way you can copy a letter, a note you have written yeah, using your own initiative to the president. Yeah, of course, it's very different if the president asks you to put something in writing and instructs you, copy this letter or this document you write to me to so and so and so and so. That's very different. And that's certainly not the case here. You know every patriotic Kenyan, yeah, whatever side of the political divide they belong, should get annoyed when people are shameless. Because foreigners are reading this story and they're just laughing, especially if they're Mzungus. <laughs> this African, he writes a letter to the president and copies it to other people. This is how they do their things in black Africa. Hmm. Anyway, something else that is super relevant here are the Jubilee primaries that Kangata won against the incumbent, Kembi Gitura. Kangata won by 158,167 votes against Kembi's 146,207,000 votes. Now his opponent, Gitura, claimed that Kangata rigged the primaries and was illegally declared the winner. Okay, that happens a lot in politics. You lose an election and you blame it on rigging. That is okay. However, you will remember that a Jubilee insider, a man called David Murade, told us on national television that the Jubilee primaries, the party nomination exercise, especially in the Mount Kenya region, was rigged. And he told us 
The person responsible for that rigging was Deputy President William Samoy Ruto. Okay, Murade may be telling lies. It is possible. Because we know there's no love lost between David Murade and the Deputy President. But let me leave it to you to make up your mind and decide if two people say the same thing at different times, yeah, whether it's lies or the truth. We also know that in the Mount Kenya region, if you got a jubilee ticket, the election was over. <laughs> you are through. And so, if these two individuals, Kembi Gitura and David Murade, are telling the truth, then the conclusion is Senator Kangata owes his seat to the Deputy President. This is significant yeah, because several people have said, several politicians, that the letter written by Senator Kangata sounded like the Deputy President speaking. The letter was full of Deputy President William Samoy Ruto ideas. For instance, the multiple questions approach to a referendum, yeah, where voters would have to vote on various issues instead of voting simply yes or no for the entire document, for the entire BBI. In my view, politically, this was a brilliant move, a good idea yeah, for those who like to play their politics in a certain way. Yeah. Where it doesn't matter how you achieve something, yeah, as long as you achieve it. Where it does not matter what means you use to achieve a certain end. Yeah, and this is very normal in politics. Many people play their politics like that including the deputy president. And it is not a crime. Yeah. People do it all over the world. Not my kind of politics. Yeah. But then I've never been elected into any office. <laughs> you can say that. Anyway, it was a brilliant move. Yeah, if you look at things like that. However, it was very poorly executed. And I'll tell you why. I tend to agree with the governor of Machakos, Alfred Mutua, who says this letter is the best thing that could happen to the BBI in Central Province. In simple language, yeah, the reason the governor gave is that instead of destroying the other side, it will strengthen it. It is like punching a strong man, yeah, and your punch is not enough to knock them out. And this is a strong man, and therefore you can predict what will happen next. They'll gather their strength, <laughs> and you're going to be in trouble, very serious trouble. Now, there are those who will not agree with this assessment, and the reason is that this letter seems to have affected members of the ODM party, the ODM side of the handshake, led by Raila Odinga. And these people believe that because of this reaction from ODM, this letter may actually end up dismantling the handshake between President Uru Kenyatta and Raila Odinga. Personally, I don't think so. And the main reason that a vast majority yeah, of those in ODM and those in Jubilee, the faction with the president, are convinced that this letter actually originated from Karen, from the deputy president. Some are even saying that this is a move by Senator Kangata to create an excuse to create an opportunity for him to defect
to the DP Ruto camp. Yeah, and I have no idea whether that is true or not. But still, my view is that the letter will not destroy the handshake. Indeed, it will strengthen the handshake against the DP Ruto camp. Now, if you have enjoyed this video, please remember to like it. Because that helps this video and that helps this channel. This channel for a better Kenya. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha.